Yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry, you didn't give me the warning. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Can you raise it up a little bit? Yeah. I want to see people's faces. Can you switch yeah. around? That's fine if you'd like to. Please uh, pardon my ignorance uh, here, um, because we don't know as much about this as we'd like to. We are here partly to learn, and um, so these comments are preliminary, and we, um, we hope that by the end of this process we'll know a little bit more. Um, the Department of Energy is also learning. Um, we, uh, the Department of Energy has spent a lot of money on the pit conversion and disassembly facility, and there's really nothing much to show for that. And is, uh, so the, the program is partially a fiasco, and I think that if we all approach this with humility, we can get farther. Um, this is a program that has had significant setbacks already, and it's very easy uh, after a long process like this to feel like a lot of things are set but I want to encourage all of us to see if we can detach from commitments we've already made, from sunk costs, and look at things as freshly as we can. And I think the um, one thing that I think should uh, give us a little pause right at the beginning, um, the impacts of the alternatives um, didn't differ appreciably. That is often, in my experience, a good indication that not a wide enough range of alternatives have been considered. Um, that might be an indication that a wider set of alternatives should be considered, if the impacts all look more or less the same. Another um, point that comes out right away is that there's a synthetic, some synthetic alternatives where there are many options, say for pit disassembly and conversion, and uh, the department reserves um, the actual the linear combination of using PF4, H Canyon, installation in MFFF, and some combination, and I'm, I'm leaving out one, I think, of a oh, separate freestanding facility. Um, so the in a way, that is a kind of a decision not to make a decision. That is kind of using the NEPA process as a, I mean, it could be construed from an outsider. As I said, I don't know everything about this, but could be construed as using the NEPA process to sort of cover your ass and uh, avoid actually making a decision, avoid if you just you know say, well, we're going to do one of the above. Um, I want to say something about PF4. Um, there is the, department, uh, the department's statements about PF4 in different venues aren't completely consistent, and I'm very sympathetic with that because it's complicated and and it's a large set of bureaucracies that are interacting and people have different specialties and the safety people are different than the security people, are different than the program people, and everybody has their specialties, but they don't all mesh. So in some contexts, PF4 is considered very crowded and there's not very much space for additional uh, not enough space for the missions it already has. But now we are talking about a very large new mission at PF4, a type of mission for which the facility was not originally designed. During the 1980s, PF4 did a lot of plutonium processing, and it was very damaging for the facility. Um, that was before its seismic vulnerabilities were known, and indeed at this point have not been fully addressed. There is still no path to closure on an active confinement ventilation system, or even on the seismic structural safety of the facility. And so it's a little unclear why this is a viable pathway at this point for uh, disposition of plutonium when these very basic problems have not been fully resolved. There are conflicts between existing missions at PF4, which we believe could become apparent in the future when optimistic projections in budget, in space, um, don't really work out. So what happens when this mission conflicts with pit surveillance? Do the lefts, do the life extension programs come to a grinding halt because of a problem 
uh, because of a conflict in space or in waste um, processing uh, for MOX fuel fabrication. What about research? I know it's very important to people here. I am wondering, uh, it's, not, it's not that important to me, we feel that the plutonium research mission here at Los Alamos is overblown. However, um, people, I think that people who do plutonium research here at the laboratory need to be conscious of how the production missions may conflict with their research agenda. And I'm not sure that they fully understand that. Because, again, we all have our little uh, foxholes. Um, we, about a minute. Um, we think that the, one of the one of the boxes we might we think that we ought to try to get out here is the one is the requirement to put the plutonium in a form that cannot be used for nuclear weapons. Um, so we're not sure there needs to be a pit disassembly and conversion mission. Um, we are wondering whether or not the Department of Energy should invest some time in the direct disposal of demilitarized pits without disassembly. Permanently demilitarized pits. We are looking for simple, robust solutions which are safe and secure and are affordable for a country that uh, does not have the financial resources that it had 10, 15, 20 years ago. So, I'm running out of time? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs>